welcome. Uh, my name is Eugene Albulescu, and I'm here with a uh, uh, world famous uh, professor and pianist, uh, Jerem Lowenthal. And uh, we're here at Juilliard School. And there are people practicing or teaching lessons next door. That's um, the jazz department. It is, wow. Yes. Um, we are talking about a concert that we are going to be doing together with you in uh, this December. I think it's the 8th and 9th of December and uh, at 8 p.m. in Baker Hall at Lehigh University. And uh, uh, we're very happy to have you play with our orchestra. So we thought we would do a little video to talk about uh, your take on a piece and uh, what we might expect. That's delightful. So first thing I wanted to ask you, I think we, we played this piece uh, last summer at Indiana. Yes. And in one of the emails you were talking to me, you mentioned that you have a uh, almost biological connection to this piece. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you if you could elaborate on that. Well, it's a piece that has meant a tremendous amount to me all of my life. I, uh, I studied it when I was studying with the great pianist William Capel. And um, um, I've, I've played it many times. I, when I was a student at the Juilliard School, there was a competition for this piece. And, well, I won the competition. And uh, it, it meant a great deal to me, partly because I was so in love with the music. And it, it was just very gratifying. Anyway, I have um, played the, the, the piece many times. And uh, some years later, when I got married, I was given as a wedding present an album of cadenzas composed for this concerto uh, uh, by all sorts of people, such as Clara Schumann and Brahms and uh, Dohnanyi and, and, and uh, Saint-Saëns and, and Buzoni. And um, uh, I was fascinated by this uh, collection. And I had it on my piano for years, and one day I showed it to a student, the now extremely well-known pianist James Giles, and um, he said, well, why don't you record it? And um, we, we record it with, with some of these cadenzas. Anyway, it took a while, but eventually I did make a recording uh, of the concerto with uh, a, a dozen or so cadenzas composed by different composers, including, of course, Beethoven's own, which is the one. Beethoven actually composed two cadenzas, but um, uh, the, there's one that's always performed. And it's so familiar that it's thought to be part of the concerto. But of course, it's not. It's and, not. and all these other composers composed uh, cadenzas for it. So, um, uh, so that was very interesting. And um, the years have gone by, but the, the piece has always meant more and more to me as I come to, to feel the significance of the double thirds in it, for example, and, and how this represented uh, extreme expressivity for the, uh, romantic, for the classical composers. And, um, it is early romantic in, in yeah, many yes, ways. Yes, 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 right. In fact, one of the things that I always thought about the piece is the the opus doesn't sound like what it is. It sounds like it should be like 90 or in the 90s, not in the 50s. <laughs> I mean, if you if you think that the piece published just before this was Appassionata, they're they're not that alike in terms of uh, in terms of style. Uh, it's very romantic, also in, uh, in in feeling. Well, of course, Beethoven moved from style to style very right. consciously. Right. He, he, uh, you do find every now and then that he's thinking of the previous work. Um, the, um, the fantasy, uh, opus uh, 78, 78, no. Um, Choral fantasy? The, the, the Beethoven fantasy, you know, the, the so-called G minor fantasy, which is not in G minor. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 
It's 77. It's, it's, it's open, open 77. And uh, the theme of that is very similar to the theme of, of the slow movement of his next work, The Emperor Concerto. Right. And so you see, and uh, uh, similarly, um, the Opus 54 Sonata is clearly inspired by what he originally wrote as the slow movement of the Opus 53 Sonata. The Andante. And the Andante, yeah. and, then, and, also then, an and then discarded mm -hmm. as... I that. play that piece a lot. Uh, I love that. Really? Andante. Yeah, well, it's a great piece. Yeah. It's a great piece. There's a great story about that. Yes. You heard about the, uh, why, uh, supposedly why he didn't uh, publish it, that um, uh, there was a, a soiree that uh, one of the, I think it was Lobkowitz, uh, set up for him to to try to uh, shorten his opera because it had been a flop, and uh, uh, so all these people tried to prevail on him, and he got extremely mad and left uh, and said not one note must go. Eventually, he did, and it be became known as Fidelio after Leonora. And um, but uh, evidently, Cherny was in the room, and um, uh, Cherny, his student, and he. Beethoven left in a um, in a big uh, fit, and then he 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 comes back because he forgot his scarf, and there is Cherny <laughs> at the piano uh, that was trying to mimic how Beethoven played, and he's playing that piece. Oh apparently. my goodness! And he got so upset that they were mocking him, making fun of him, and oh. then he went. I'm not sure it's possibly apocryphal, but supposedly that's that's why he never published it. That, that's an amazing um, that's an amazing yeah. story. Yeah. Uh, but the Opus 54. Yeah. is the same, the, uh, the a minuet same. In, in F major, and yeah. it's clearly inspired yeah. by that. Yeah. All right. Same so, feeling. Same yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, all right. On the other hand, as you say, Opus 58 and 59 are c completely different. Um, I, th I think of Opus 58, the, the, our concerto, a little bit with the, the violin concerto. Yeah. It, it, yes. it, has, yes. it has a similar yeah. feeling, yeah. I think. Uh, though of course it's quite different um, and um, the, um, the the characteristic phrasing is uh, is very Schubertian yes in yeah that's what I always feel it's also very interesting his choice of instrumentation the way uh, uh, trumpets and timpani come only in the last movement um, it feels like the piece progresses from very um, much more pastoral first movement to um, to you know very exuberant uh, in the last right. movement. Um, so can I ask you about cadenzas um, on your CD? With um, I, I should say like the, your CD is a two CD set that um, has this piece with uh, all sorts of cadenzas, right. uh, including Beethoven's own, um, and you have one that you commissioned which I found fascinating. That's right. Uh, could you talk about that? Yes, well, I commissioned that from the wonderful composer Frederick Zhevsky. Um, Mr. Zhevsky, very, very well known, particularly for his piano music, uh, uh, his set of variations on uh, El Pueblo Unido, uh, Hamas Será Vencido, The People United Will Never Be Defeated. Uh, that that set is um, played a great deal today by uh, many many ambitious pianists. In fact, I feel that it's taking the place in the piano repertoire of the Goldberg Variations. Not that the Goldberg Variations isn't still played, but for many years the Goldberg Variations has been the piece that really really ambitious pianists want to do because it's so difficult and so great and so long, and. Um, um, Today, a similar thing has happened with, with the Zhevsky variations. And uh, there are other uh, works for, for piano in particular that are played a lot, like the Winsboro Cotton Mill Blues and, uh, and the Down by the River side. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, well, another time, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a story about Down by the River side. But in any case, uh, I admire Mr. Shevsky's music very much, and, and um, I also know him personally. He's okay. something of a friend of mine. So, um, um, so yes, so I uh, asked him if he would write a, a cadenza 
for uh, the, the Beethoven Fourth. I knew that he likes to do things like that, and that he himself, when he plays pieces like the Hammerklavier Sonata, which he does, he intersperses little improvised cadenzas in it to the horror of, of uh, puritanical people. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I asked him if he would write this cadenza, and uh, he said, uh, yes, he'd, he'd like to. He said, tell me um, if a composer asks you to improvise, would you do so? I said, oh, yes, I would. I said, and not only that, but I would practice my improvisations very carefully beforehand to make sure that it sounded spontaneous. So <laughs> he laughed at that. Um, and, um, and he wrote this fascinating cadenza. It's too long, of course, for, for a real performance. It's just the first but moment? Yes, yeah. yes, okay. yes. Uh, the, yes, he, it's just, it's just it's that for one. For the first moment? Uh, yes. Um, it's about 10 minutes long. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, uh, it's gorgeous. Well, thank you. I, uh, um, it's, of course, very ingenious, and um, uh, some things you have to, you have to look for to find. Mm -hmm. uh, the themes, for example, that are perfectly present, but every note is in a different range, so that it, it doesn't immediately show itself to the ear. Right. Um, it's the sort it's of abstract. thing. It's abstract. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, uh, but it's uh, good. Thomas Addis does things like that mm -hmm. very often. Uh, a student of mine played Addis's mazurkas last night, and uh, there's one in which he's quoting a Chopin mazurka, mm -hmm. but you have to look very closely to see it again because because it's uh, the, the notes are, are are not in in the same form as they are in, in Chopin. Uh, anyway, uh, I asked Mr. Zhevsky to do that, and he did it. And I played it uh, when I made the recording. I made it with the uh, orchestra of uh, CIM, Cleveland uh, Institute of Music. And, um, and we performed it in Severance Hall, uh, the hall of the Cleveland Orchestra. And um, I I had to cut it. They they really? would, they okay. wouldn't let me do the whole cadenza, but I I cut it. And still, it was quite shocking to people. And I remember one student stopped me. He said, "Well, do you think that's in the style of Beethoven?" I said, "Well, obviously, it's not in the style of Beethoven. That's exactly the point. The point of of a cadenza is supposed to be to represent." The, the performer. Now, I'm substituting Mr. Zhevsky for myself, right, right. but uh, of course it doesn't sound like Beethoven. Uh, why should a piece by Zhevsky, why should a piece by me sound like Beethoven? I know that not everybody thinks this way, but th this is the way but I, I approach I think Beethoven thought that way because his cadenzas to Mozart concertos are not stylistically no, just no. necessarily Mozart. He's definitely asserting himself to say, "This is what I can do to a Mozart concerto." Yes, yes. And and and, and his cadenzas for his own uh, first and second cadenzas are written in a style quite different. different. Oh, yeah. The third cadenza for the first first concerto, concerto and, oh, yeah, the, and this and the second concerto is the the, the cadenza for the second concerto very clearly late Beethoven. It right. doesn't belong with. Right. Right. So why not? Yes, so why not? So, do you have thoughts what you're going to do for our concert? <laughs> well, I haven't quite decided, but um, um, I will almost certainly do for the first movement the Clara Schumann okay. a, a cadenza. I, I'm thinking of um, making a slight change in okay. it. Uh, can I use the piano is sure yeah all right <laughs>
own cadenza, which, as you know, starts with fast triplets like that. And I thought, well, why not do the same thing with Clara Schumann? Sorry. Eventually, uh, you come to the tranquillo, which of course is right out of the, the concerto. Yes, so. Um, so for the third it, movement. Her, uh, yes, the, the, the Clara Schumann uh, cadenza for the third movement is wonderful, but it's extremely long, mm -hmm. using. Um, uh, quotes from the other movements extensively, mm -hmm. um, very daring of her. Mm -hmm. But uh, there I have to say that Beethoven says very specifically, let the cadenza be, be short. short. And it seems a little perverse to go against Beethoven's express wish in that way. So I'm not doing the, th the, the Cl Clara Schumann cadenza. I will probably do the Busoni, but um, I, haven't, I haven't quite decided. So there's, of course, another possibility. I'm just saying it's a possibility, since there are two uh, 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 concerts. Oh. If I want to be oh. ambitious. Now you're that, talking, yes. That would, that would put a little strain on you, but I think no, you would. No, 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 it won't. In fact, when I, I, I think that's the best of all worlds, is to have, um, to have musicians in the orchestra have be somehow on um, on guard right. for what might happen. That's right. what the cadenza is. Right. It's, a, it's a place where things right. might happen. All right. And you've, so you've, you could, you you've, you you have convinced me. I, I, I needed that little yeah. encouragement. Oh yes. And yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll do In that. fact, when I do uh, when I play uh, Mozart concertos, the entry cadenzas, I, I usually I, sure. you know what you were saying about before about the fact that. Um, we pretty much have to practice our improvisations. <laughs> uh, the way I get around that is I, I come up with ten that uh -huh. I can do, uh -huh. and then on, in the concert I uh -huh. choose one, Wonderful. and then it sounds like it's improvised Wonderful. because sure. there is an sure. act of choice in, in that happens sure. in concert. Sure. But of course, uh, it has to be rehearsed with the orchestra, and so often like professional, like big orchestras, not happy. Uh, <laughs> they want to know exactly what you're going to yes, do, right. and uh, so often. Uh, but I've, I think that it's a it's a great thing. It's what have, it's why, what cadenza should be there for. The the structure of the music stops. Yes. And there's a place there for music to be unstructured and to be somewhat quasi improvised. And so, in fact, you could improvise, and we'd love it too. Yes. So, uh, yes. have you yes. ever improvised one? And yes. uh, no, I won't do that. Right. Uh, I. I I think it's a lovely idea. But have you done? I no. Okay. I encourage my students to do it. I, <laughs> I, I get rid of my feeling of obligation to improvise by, by asking my students to do it. Uh, I have students who are very interested in imp improvisation, actually, and, and um, they do very interesting things. Great. Well, we look forward to uh, working with you. Uh, orchestra is extremely excited. And uh, uh, again, this is uh, December. Uh, 8th and 9th at Zollner Art Center, Baker Hall at Lehigh University. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Looking forward.